everybody. This video is on the topic of how it is possible to train reliable recalls with dogs using positive reinforcement. Now, I frequently get asked, how can you train a dog to come back away from something, say an, um, a squirrel or a deer or a rabbit or something they're excited about, like a car or people or dogs or, or a body of water they want to jump in? How can you teach the dog to come away and come back to you from these things that they want to do with a piece of food that they don't even want to eat in those moments that they're so excited. So I'm going to briefly explain how this is possible. Now what you shouldn't do is try to train the dog to come back to you when they don't want what you have. They don't want your food, they want to do the thing in the environment, or they're just so aroused they can't even learn at that point in time. So you can't it's true, you can't use positive reinforcement using food and toys and access to the environment when a dog is that excited. So the key is creating a training plan where you break the steps up smaller where the dog is never getting that excited. So um, I'm going to show you some footage of my terrier uh, in, in response to, uh, he was very prey driven and he wanted to just chase and I don't know what he wanted to do, probably kill whatever it was that he saw. Um, so I'll show you some footage of him before the training and then footage of him after. And the key is, is instead of trying to train him to listen to me when there was prey around, I instead worked on counter conditioning, teaching him to be calm and ignore the animals in the environment. So I'll show you the footage of him after training him to relax and do nothing when there's prey in the environment. And I actually do have a protocol on how I do this emotional and behavioral modification process and that I'll link in the description below. I have yet to make a free YouTube video on the protocol, but I hope to soon. Tug the Terrier excited about wildlife. <laughs> Did you like the frog? You did. Did you want to eat it for breakfast? After teaching the dogs to be calm around wildlife, here's some footage of my terrier just sniffing around in the morning on my property, and there's a rabbit that runs out in front of him, and he just looks curiously at it. And there's one on the hose pipe that runs away, but he doesn't even notice it because there's always a lot of rabbits in my backyard. I had to work with my dogs around chickens, and I also worked with them around rabbits, pet rabbits. And here is when I lived in Sweden, and there's some, a huge herd of deer running through the forest. There were always rabbits and squirrels on my property, but they never dared go into my backyard that's fenced, where my dogs like to hang out. And so the first time that the squirrels came in, which is uh, in this footage, the dogs were mildly interested because there was someone new in their property. But as you can see, no one really did anything. The rabbits and the squirrels soon figured out that my dogs don't chase them, so they would come and live in my backyard, obviously for safety reasons and because of the food source, so I actually had to start chasing them away myself because it started to get ridiculous how many squirrels and rabbits were sharing the yard with us. There's a stupid squirrel under here. Here my dogs run to the training field and ignore the rabbit they scare while running in a group. As you can see in the footage, the dogs don't need food around or to be told what to do when there's prey. They don't need to be told to leave it. It's almost like the prey has, been, has become unimportant stimuli in the environment, such as blowing leaves, or to dogs who aren't interested in cars, traffic, and people walking by that they have no interest in. So um, even though when I kicked, the, um, kicked that object and the squirrel underneath went whizzing past, that wasn't a toy to my dog, so he had absolutely no interest in that. But if I had rolled a ball 
um, instead of a squirrel, he would have got super excited and gone and grabbed the ball. So we can condition dogs to be calm and relaxed around other stimuli and show self-control. So instead of trying to use food or toys to compete or distract your dog uh, to get them to come back to you. You can actually use conditioning where you're, you're teaching your dog to be calm and relaxed around everything. And then like my dogs, when I walk somewhere and they're off leash, they're not really that interested in anything else besides me. So I can easily call them away from other things. But it's not because I spent months and months working on a recall. In fact, with my latest puppy, who's laying just below me, uh, Halo, um, I only did maybe five or ten training sessions on the, on the actual recall and proofing the recall. And the important part of the training was teaching him to be calm around different types of distractions that might excite him, like wildlife, fast-moving cars and bicycles, and skateboards, and things like that, which he was interested in. Teaching your dog to be calm around things that make him excited in the environment, it does take time, but the amazing thing is that when you reinforce your dog for enjoying being calm around these things, usually, um, if you've done it right, you don't have to go and do brush-up training. So, you know, uh, I live in the country and there are squirrels and rabbits all over my property and nobody gets excited by them because we worked on it and they don't even see them as something interesting anymore. Or the neighbor's dogs, when they come running up and barking at the fence, they don't even see them. It's just like birds tweeting in the trees or crows flying through the sky for them. So instead of trying to teach your dog to come back to you when he's excited about someone playing soccer at the park or a loose dog running in the park, you could instead work on a calm settle on a mat with the distractions far enough away that your dog can completely ignore them and then gradually get your dog closer where he can relax and re receive treats between his paws for calmly uh, observing the env environment and not fixating on whatever it is that he was excited about before. And then when you can do that, then you can imagine how easy it is to train the, the recall with those distractions. Uh, if you want to know how to train the calm settle, I have a link in the description below on how to work on that. So that is a really important concept to consider when trying to train a really reliable recall. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is giving your dog access to what he wants for coming back to you. So uh, if you're just using food or toys and um, the dog is weighing what's more reinforcing in the environment, even though you are using a high rate of reinforcement, perhaps the dog is finding it punishing to come back to you because he's leaving something that's better. For example, if you were having a delicious uh, dessert out at a restaurant, socially distance, dis distancing, of course, or maybe in the past, before uh, the pandemic. <laughs> um, so you're really enjoying your dessert, and someone calls you over, and they're like, hey, come over here, come over here. I have some yummy cereal. And you take a bite of that, and then you're like, ah, oh, that wasn't very good. And then you go back to your dessert. Um, after a couple of times, you're going to be like, no, thank you. <laughs> I fell for that the first time. I'd rather be eating this dessert that I have now. So um, when we train dogs to listen to us, and they know that by listening to us, they, they get access to what they want. So listening, getting to do what they want uh, becomes contingent on listening to us. Then when they hear us ask for something from them, they're like, oh, good. That means I get to do the thing that I really want to do. So you can train this, and I have a video on how to begin the training using food, but once the dog has learned how to um, do a behavior or listen to you or give you some attention in order uh, for access to what they want, you can start proofing, that be proofing the behaviors with different distractions. So you can ask your dog for attention before he gets to sniff a bush, before he gets to say hi to people, uh, before he gets to go play uh, loose or go swimming in the lake. And then you can also practice calling your dog back, giving him reinforcement, or perhaps not giving him reinforcement and then re-releasing -re him back to getting to do what he wanted to do or even getting to do something better than he was doing before. So that is 
an extremely, extremely useful tool. And then you don't get that dog that looks uh, depressed or punished when you call them because uh, most of the time that they're called back to you, it's always been in their best interest. I hope you found this video helpful for your training. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kikopop by clicking the join button. See you later.